All right, so this one, Dear Matsons. How do I help my kids grow in emotional intelligence? My teen has big emotions, but she has trouble naming them and identifying what is causing them. Got any good tools? Love emotional roller coaster. Oh, you are in good company. Um, the reality is, is that the teen brain is being under construction. Like yeah. it's being rewired for adulthood. Uh, the last time that happened was in those younger years. And so most teenagers are on a roller coaster of emotions. They have three times the intensity of what we feel as adults. And so when they're sad, they're really sad. <laughs> and when they're happy, they're really happy. And it's kind of actually one of the most exciting times, right, in life. And it's kind of fun how God designed that. Um, it propels teens um, forward to, to take higher risks. Mm -hmm. And they're actually what move us forward in our culture. A lot of shifts happen, questions happen because of teenage brains. Um, Shout out to the teenagers. Yeah, but <laughs> parenting those teens, those oh, big man. emotions can be really <laughs> difficult, especially if we haven't really had the tools yeah. to be preparing them for that. So really, if you've got younger um, kids, pay attention because really we can practice doing these things when they're little so that by the time they're in high school or teen brain, those tween years, um, they've got these tools. And if you're just starting, it's not too late. Um, but just to recognize that we don't come into um, the world with a, a Rolodex of emotional words. We actually have to learn those. Um, most of us don't really know uh, what to call things and we feel them in our bodies. And so maybe you've heard your kid feel sick, right? Like, oh, my tummy's hurting. I don't want to go to school. Well, that's anxiety, right? They're feeling anxious, um, but all they know to do is to say they're sick, right? You know, you can think about that. Or where do you feel emotions in your body? Well, maybe some of you dads and guys out there watching this are like, uh, you could relate to me, which was I did. I had one word, one emotional word. It was anger. <laughs> and uh, that seems to be fairly accepted. Acceptable um, in society for guys, but and for um, a lot of girls, I think too. I would feel a lot of things. I'm definitely a deep feeler in terms of what I have, but in terms of expressing that, I had to really start figuring out. Well, what what is that? And and then give it names. And yeah, you helped me in that. But also having two daughters has helped me in that, and continues to help me uh, to identify those in myself. But then to be able to identify them in them, and that's my job as yeah. part of uh, as a parent is to see what's going on in them. So so, so where do you feel it in your body? Where I, I feel stress and anxiety for sure. It shows up when I clench my jaw and when I do this with my hands. And I didn't even know I did that until you had shared that I did. And then I was like, I don't do that. And then I looked yeah. and watched and sure enough, I do that. And well, that, that allows me to regulate faster what I need so that I, um, I can help my kids. And yeah. that's a secret right there for parents, isn't it? And I can tell, right? Like if he's starting to do this, I can tell, oh, emotional, there's some emotions coming up. Well, the truth is that happens for our teens too. And so we're trying to give them words when what we're paying attention, if you're paying attention and noticing using tentative language. So it wouldn't really help you, Jeff, if I was like, you're mad right now. Like I can tell. <laughs> okay. That does not help. <laughs> but especially with a teen, right, or any kid, it just does feels demeaning to tell someone what they feel. But when you do what's called a soft toss and you mirror back yeah. what you're noticing. And so I can say, it seems like you might be sad or you're getting really annoyed with me right now. OK, I've probably say that to my girls all the time. I can tell you're kind of getting annoyed right now with me. And they're like, mm hmm. <laughs> but what that does is it helps them to put words to what's going on inside. And I might even take it a step further by talking about the body and saying, you're slumped down right now. You seem sad or frustrated um, or your face is scrunched up. You seem really mad at me right now. <laughs> OK, I'm helping them put words and and connecting. And so if they're little, we're doing the same thing with them when they're little. But as teens, feel free to just give them words. If you don't know, asking them, what are you feeling right now is the most frustrating thing for anyone, but especially a teen, because they really don't know. And so you'll get a response. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It is an honest. I don't know. Or sometimes it's a, I don't want to tell you. I know, but I don't want to tell you. Mm -hmm. So that's another tool. If you get an I don't know, I might ask a teen. I'd say, which is it? Mm -hmm. Is it um, 
you really don't want to talk to me right now? <laughs> or is it you need help figuring out what it is? And that can also help build that relationship with your teen who's got big emotions. I really need help right now. And then we can sit and we can talk and I can listen and let them tell me. An idea just came to my mind that we've talked about before, which is like a, the idea of the thermostat, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, in the thermostat, like you as a parent want to be the thermostat. You don't want to be a thermometer that is uh, changes based on the temperature that your teen or your, your child is bringing to you, rising and falling with them in their emotions. You as a parent want to set the thermostat, right? Mm -hmm. to, the, to the temperature that's going to help calm their brain and uh, allow them to come back to a space where they can actually reasonably talk to you and that's such a, a cool thing to know is, is that especially if their thermometer is spiking for them right and they're just all over the place uh, you can know this is so, such a practical uh, wisdom here in the science it takes 30 minutes for blood to um, return once it's kind of gone to the amygdala the back part of the brain which is the fight fight or freeze where you know and teen brains are always like this they're yeah, just kind of there all the time to uh for the blood to return back to their their frontal lobe where they can really essentially um, deal with rational thoughts and, and deal with the um, healthy emotions. Yeah. Speak to that. Do you want me to do the, yeah. the hand? Well, Dr. Yeah. Siegel yep. has the hand model. And so just real quick, because this is helpful for all of us, it helps us in response, like you're talking about, to stay and be a thermostat. But the downstairs brain um, is the amygdala. Mm -hmm. That's the part of the brain that's with a baby and it grows with us till we're old. And the upstairs brain is the part that's fully developed until we're 28 if we're male and 24 for female. Wait, 26 or 24? 26, but for some it's 28. So I don't, <laughs> okay, the research okay. is Just want to there. make sure. I um, that right. yeah. But what happens is, Jeff's alluding to the idea that the yeah. blood from the frontal lobe, this is our rational thought. I call it the adult um, parent brain and this is the child brain the one that's just all emotion and when we're overwhelmed if something's bothering us the brain starts to send a signal and the blood leaves the frontal lobe and goes down into the uh, amygdala in your fight flight or freeze and your lid flips yeah. and then that's when we see the big emotion in the extreme and all of us adult teen child yep. really need somebody to help ground us so having someone else be the thermostat who can remain calm the worst thing is to have two flipped lids right yeah. teen brains going crazy parent brains going it's crazy like call for the time out yeah at that and point. this is where we send the most right um this is when the worst of us comes out so mm -hmm. being able to know that it takes 30 minutes for our brains to calm down and we have to have something to regulate so when we know that we're overwhelmed yeah. or our teen is overwhelmed or our kid is overwhelmed mm -hmm. we need to at a neutral time come up with five things that help us ground ourselves and so that's mm -hmm. something that we want to talk to our teens about is when you're feeling big emotions what can you you do to help calm yourself and then we can talk more what are uh, five things that you do well, I can give a few that come to my mind now. I just got to go for a walk. I need to call for a timeout. If I can sense that, my jaw is clenched. My hands are doing that. And if, or if I've already totally lost it, as if you will, my, my lid is kind of flipped. I just need to, yeah. need to go out and get some fresh air, get some perspective, get some distance away from what's happened there. But I, how, how you leave in that situation is important. You got to have, there's some healthy ground rules for leaving. It's to say, I need to take a timeout for me. I don't say I need to, I need you to take a timeout for <laughs> me. <laughs> um, and uh, I, and I got to go do that. And I'm going to come back in, in X number of minutes and try again. Yeah. Be one that comes to my mind. And yeah. Other things that to do is just <clears throat> is to get more into a, uh, a listening posture if I can if I can uh, do that. Um, but usually for me, kinesthetic need to get out, need to yeah. go for a walk. So creation is big for you, getting out yeah. in nature Fresh and air, moving your body. Just a, a yeah. away I have from actually the seen you doing push-ups sometimes in your office. <laughs> like he's sometimes you gotta, gotta feel the burn. Getting that anger out. I love it. But um, well, maybe I don't love it in the moment, but it's the idea of saying out loud to our teen, like, I might need a break because this is a lot right now. Let's both go take a break. I'm gonna take a break and then let's talk about this in 30 minutes. Um, that being a regular rhythm in your family will feel normal and we're teaching them for life. Um, for me, yep. I definitely need to verbally vomit. So I will journal. I will process. Sometimes I need to talk to another friend and to get it out. Mm -hmm. um, definitely move my body and music. And then a practical, something very practical for me, like doing dishes or laundry, yeah. um, where I can actually see something getting done. It's moving uh, my body and actually, uh, research says, calms the body down when you can complete a task. And so we've equipped our daughters to yeah. have their five. They yeah. know what they need to do yeah. when they're frustrated or overwhelmed. 
That's big, big for me too. I'll just even say, what can I do to do something positive right now? You know, and just to distract essentially, but also allow my brain to calm down. <clears throat> that allows that outlet as well. So it's not just an escape. It's, it's on purpose. How can I calm myself down? And, uh, and I, of course, asking God to help us in those moments. Right. And this is all integrated in that space. It's uh, God made our bodies. He made our emotions and he wants us to, um, develop some self-control yeah. around that. And so that's getting smart about that. Yeah. And he says, do not sin in your anger. And so yeah. this is a way of being able to calm down our emotions and mm -hmm. to get our brains back and then be able to really have compassion for where one another's at. And so when a teen's overwhelmed, have grace for the fact that their brain is being uh, rewired under Lots construction. Grace. It's under construction and, um, have, be aware of your own reactions. Yeah. Uh, let's be the thermostat. And then making sure that we all have a list of things to do to calm ourselves down and then being able to mirror back what we're seeing in our, with our kids instead of asking them, what do you feel and why do you feel? Just mirror it back and that gives them room to talk about it. Yes, that's true. No, that's not. And if you wait, they'll keep going. That's not true because I'm actually dot, dot, dot. And so with that keep, tentative language, yeah, it seems like I'm, I'm sensing. Yeah, that's good.